Welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend. And today is the first of a short two-parter. But I felt that they would work better if I put them into two. And today I'm going to talk about a little attitude adjustment we all have to make. I can't or I won't. Or I don't want to. Colossians 4 verse 6. Let your speech always be gracious seasoned with salt so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. James 5 verse 12. But above all my brothers do not swear either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath but let your yes be yes and your no be no so that you may not fall under condemnation. One day I read the above passages and I felt the Lord's conviction. I so often used the phrase, I'm sorry I can't, or I'm sorry I'm just not able to right now. It was an easy way to avoid potential conflict if I knew my answer needed to be no and I knew that no would not be well received. It's not always to say no to loved ones and friends. In fact, it is seldom easy. However, when I do so from a place of respect, honor, and transparency, I preserve trust in each of those relationships. But when I try to excuse away my nose, I find myself in trouble. Being intentionally precise with my wording keeps me accountable both to God and to man. God challenged me one day to replace the word can't or I'm unable to with some situationally appropriate vocabulary. If my no was to be no, it needed to be stated as such. Because sometimes our yes comes with an aspect of faith behind it. For example, somebody you know well comes to you and says, I I'm really struggling financially and will you please pray if you are to give that kind of thing although that doesn't happen that often but sometimes we need to say yes and be generous even though our mind's screaming no but more times than not it's actually our no needs to be no without using the word can't this began a change in my internal dialogue. So this was between myself and God and the way that God wanted to retrain my sense of integrity in making sure that what I spoke with my lips lined up to what my heart was actually saying. And it went something like this. I can't help you or I'm sorry, I'm just not able to help you right now became I chose not to give you the help you're seeking. And that wasn't something I spoke with my lips. Sometimes that meant that I needed to say to myself, as if I were speaking to that individual, I set my will not to help you today because my yes in the past enabled your self-destructive behavior. I've set my will to pray for you, to encourage you and support you. I set my will to step out of the way because God asked me to do so. I set my will to obey the Lord when he calls me to do so. And I set my will to trust him to call others to come alongside you when he calls me to step aside. My external conversations with others began to change. I started to say things like these. Please give me some time to pray about it. We need to talk. I must apologize to you. In the past, I haven't been honest about how I feel about some things that you've asked me to do. And 
to be honest, sometimes I become resentful when it's not fair to you because all I had to say was no. And I would really hope you can forgive me for not being honest. I'm sorry, I don't have any resources to help you right now, but I know the one who does. Can I pray for you right here and right now about what you're going through? And will you keep me updated with progress reports so we can continue to pray together? If we want to have authentic, meaningful, loving relationships, then we must step past that fear of being rejected when we have to say no because those around us will either take advantage of us and that builds resentment in our hearts or they will sense that we are not being honest with them and that will put a wall between us too. So stay tuned for part two.